there have been there's some big stories in the media right now about the media. Uh, I think probably uh, in, in, a, in a very kind of insular, inside the Beltway way, uh, Susan Glasser losing her job at the watch. You know, headline: <laughs> Win six Pulitzers, subhead. You know, lose job. But uh, the national editor of the Washington Post has been removed. She was a controversial um, uh, editor. D any thoughts on that? Well, since your wife works for the Post, do <laughs> you want to handle that question? No, actually, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Well, uh, it, was it a move seen to be coming? Uh, you know, there had been, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, talk about uh, about that, but I, I mean, I really don't want to talk okay, about well, it. We, but well, that, that, that is the type of thing that yeah. before it happens, you see the complaints yeah. and media you see columns it coming? about it. I mean, you know, you, you know, you know, the Post has a pretty big newsroom. If people feel aggrieved about any issue, they, yeah. there are people who cover the media who are very quick to write about what's going on within the Post. So there were signs of unhappiness. Whether the whether you know the unhappiness was was legitimate, you don't really know until you know there's a final decision made. And um, you know the Post, I think, is a, is a, is, a, is an excellent paper, and I think the Times is excellent, and they do a great job. They don't do everything, which is why people like like, like me have, have 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 jobs. But, but um, you know, uh, you're winning the last round of Pulitzers. It's posted very well, and their political coverage, I think, has been more or less strong. And, it's just that usually it after something more, like that, you don't see the national editor losing the job. Well, it's it seemed like, to be the story. All I can say is what all I can talk about is what I've read. Yeah. And the stories were that there were managerial issues, that people were not getting along with her, yeah. and they thought she was heavy-handed as a manager. I, I know, I've known Susan for years, and I've never had to work for her, so she, we, everything's been <laughs> fine. I don't know what she is like and, as a boss. And Michael is not talking, yeah. so... Well, well, okay, but I will say, uh, there is a huge story in the media going on right now. And, and it's, it's probably not, the it's next... It's not personality. It's, it's, it's what's happening to the news media right now. And the Washington Post wins six Pulitzers, but you look at declining circulation, declining yes, absolutely. advertising. This but is something that's constant throughout the new, news, right, newspapers right. and news magazines. All the revenue figures We're in the, the last quarter. And, and you know, this, guess what? Why is this happening? Economics 101. If you give your product away for free, okay. why will people continue to buy so it? That, that's not really complicated. But, but, okay. Nobody's figured out. What do a you make? To, beyond this. What do you make of Rupert Murdoch buying the Wall Street Journal and potentially buying Newsday? What 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 does that say to you about? Well, that's that's a that, sign that he's going. He's really going up against the New York Times since he isn't able to buy the Times. He's buying yet. the he's, yeah, he's buying the journal and transforming it <laughs> away from a business first publication to a national newspaper. One of the reasons why I think the, the editor left. Well, I was just going to say that editor's you know, already you know, left. He's gone. Do, and by buying transform, news, maybe not the right word. Yeah, but by you know, <laughs> well, by buying Newsday, if he succeeds, you know, he has the journal, which is big in New York City. He has the Post, which loses money, but it's big in New York City. And he has Newsday, which comes into Queens. He he's, and Long Island. He's kind of surrounding the Times. Right. But, and um, it's it's a very aggressive move on his part. But does this go back to what Michael's talking about? You know, the the the, the advent of the power of the internet. Does it go back to it in a good or bad way? I mean, does, is is having Rupert Murdoch invest in newspapers a good thing? I mean, I don't know. I mean, Murdoch is sort of you know sui generis. He's and and, and he's bigger than anybody else, <laughs> and and because of that, he could do it. But I think the underlying trends are the real story to watch here and the evolution of the news media you know into the, these new forms of you know web uh, blogs and 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 mm -hmm. news sites on the web i mean th this is the future and we're all having to adjust to a a a news environment that's changing before our eyes. I mean, you know, this is just in the last five to ten years. As it's remarkable how much has changed about the way people get their news. And at yeah. the same time, I think, you know, it may not be an over-exaggeration to say that the world is presenting us with more challenges than ever in more complicated matters, right. um, whether you're talking about uh, you know, the advances in biotechnology or you're talking about the challenges posed to us by what's happening in China and India. Uh, and it would seem that in order to make wise decisions, we need a better informed public than we've ever had in the past. So information media is more crucial than, than it might have been in, in previous years, but yet we have the crisis within the media, and we have a nichified media, so mm -hmm. it's, far easier, more, it's far easier than ever before to tune out. When yeah. most of us in the room, not all of us, but most of us were growing up, if you wanted to watch the news, 
you had a, you had three choices, and you had to, you know, and, and if you one, cared about and one sport, time of evening, and if you cared about sports coverage, which I did as a kid, you had to watch the well, rest of the news yeah. to wait for the sports. If you wanted to read about sports, you had to get the New York Post and flip through to the back. Yeah. It's at least you saw headlines. Yeah. And nowadays, if all you care about is sports, you know, you go straight to ESPN, you get the results emailed to you, you go to internet websites. You can really tune out of anything that you don't care about that's not put right in front right. of you. And I think as a, as, as a culture, as a society, that's probably not a good thing. Um, the last time the three of us got together, it was for your book, Hubris. Uh, was that out now in paperback? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it up. That was 2006. Am I yes. correct? Um, and it was interesting. I pulled out all my notes from that interview, and, and and it's I well, let me start here. Do you remember how many deaths there had been American military deaths there had been in the war when your book came out? Uh, it's interesting because when we wrote the uh, afterward for the paperback. I, yeah, when we wrote the <laughs> afterward for the paperback, this I do remember. Mm -hmm. we, um, uh, the end of 2006, we're writing in early 2007, the end, December 31st, the 3,000th American yeah. w okay. was killed in uh, Iraq. And now we're more than And 4, that was just when the sur Bush was announcing the surge. Mm -hmm. right. um, so was gonna we are end now uh, at uh, um, April of 2008, and uh, 4,000. 4, mm -hmm. So, right. in addition, I think we're 4,030 right, right now. So, in addition, 1,030 Americans have been killed since the surge was announced. Um, and I guess the question is, you know, how many more deaths is yeah. whatever the strategy is we've got. Um, you know, well, let, let mean, me ask. That's that's the hardest question for whoever's going to be the next. Let president. me ask you this: What um, what is new since you last updated your book? Is there anything that oh. has been changed that you said? Yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting. In, in, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. You know, we've had the surge. Mm -hmm. Now we're going back to pre-surge levels, maybe right. a little bit more, under thirty thousand troops, maybe to about one hundred and forty by the by the summertime. So in that year and a half period, we're basically. If you measure it just in terms of troop levels, we're back to where we started. It hasn't led to, according to David Petraeus and General Bush, a situation where we can get below that. Um, you know, we've had an uptick in violence in the mm -hmm. last week or two. Yeah, right. Um, we've had, you know, uh, you know, we've been down to violence <laughs> levels, you know, you know, more Bush than General Petraeus, but they hail the, the decline in violence. It's mm -hmm. gone all the way down to 2005. Yeah early 2006 levels. So, I mean, but the big picture, I think, hasn't changed. The fundamentals haven't changed. If you ask the question, why are we in Iraq uh, at this stage, it's still kind of hard to get a clear answer. You know, we're fighting the enemy. Who is the enemy? Well, in the last few weeks, the enemy seems to have been, you know, uh, uh, Maqtada al-Sadr and his Mahdi army, but last time I checked, they were Shia fighting the Shia-led government in Baghdad for power. And that raises the question whether we're in the middle of a civil war or something close to a civil war. Right. While Bush keeps talking about Al Qaeda and we're there because they hit us in 9 11. He even said this two weeks ago. You know, we're there because they hit us in 9 11. Well, we're going up against the Mahdi army, which is competing for power with Baghdad because of 9 11. It's still kind of convoluted. What? Given, Five years given, down the road. Given the, given the realities of what's still going on with the war, still very potent war, what do you make of the fact that somebody plans to open up a, a Disneyland type of amusement park in Baghdad? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So 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 January 20th, as Bush and Cheney are leaving the White House, they're going to say, where are no, you going? No, no, we're no. off to Disney World. Well, in Disneyland, <laughs> Disneyland Bar Baghdad. Yeah. It is not oh, the Disney company, but it is a guy who is out giving interviews right now who an is opening up. It's going to have here, I'm sure. skateboarding and rides, and it's opening up if right If it didn't work Baghdad. in France, it may not work you, in You have Europe. to almost take your head and shake it when you're listening uh, to this.